How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Blue Shooting and welcome back to Forgotten Trace, Thanatos, Thanatos in Nostalgia. Thanatos. I don't. I keep getting stuck on stupid Thanos. It keeps invading my mind when it comes to this game. But we are here. We are here. Last episode was interesting. We are kind of backpedaling again off of just some of the off the wall, over the top craziness. And I had a thought because I was thinking about last episode and just how how quickly things divulged and how I started to realize that I don't really like, like, it's not that I don't like anybody here. Like I actually, I'm, they're, they're all starting to grow on me more and more, even maybe not so much Ray, but maybe there's hope for him. But Miu, I, I think we got to understand a bit more about her recently. And it kind of got me realizing something. Some of these intros, uh, especially the beginning of the days with Ray and Miu have been like, soul cringing but i started to realize i think it might be on purpose like have you ever seen somebody who is under a lot of stress and that sometimes and the, and like a lot of times when people are under stress you know we we get like frazzled we get restless or like if you're me we close up i'm the kind of person who like i hunker down and like almost like turtle up and just press forward hoping for the best i've met some people who are i, I think the most ex, uh, like exact example is ray where when he's confronted with one of his lies when one of his like girls is asking questions about his girlfriend he stutters and then he starts going in these oh exorbitant lie after exorbitant lie after exorbitant lie anything he can do to try and distract the situation away from what he's afraid of I think that's kind of what we're seeing here. Even with Miyu being her crazy, like, kind of like over the top adorable self. I think these are just people who are trying to deal with an enormous amount of pain and stress. But the thing is that some people, instead of turtling up or instead of getting frazzled, they get social. In fact, I would actually say that that's actually an indication of a extrovert. An extrovert could be the kind of person who clings, claws towards some kind of social acceptance, some kind of getting people to laugh, or or even provoking a like uh, an aggressive response, an angry response. Uh, there are people who feed off of that energy, and that's how they deal with stress. It can seem really odd, and in the context of this game, it seems horrifically like is terrible like i don't understand why ray cheats all the time like it, it, like it's got it's beyond a, what i would expect to somebody who's a player or a horn dog or whatever it's like a mania for him he's like he's like he's it, it feels almost like he's going crazy i think that maybe he is maybe he's under just an immense amount of strain but he deals with it by engaging with people because he's a social person. He's an extrovert kind of individual. And so what we're seeing isn't just like crazy antics. Like it's kind of seems to be, especially because we're so used to anime and stuff where like crazy antics are just kind of the norm. Maybe it's a, in a way it's a cry for help. And Mio, I think might be the same way. She acts like almost like super innocent and childlike almost like enhancing the perception of her demeanor. But what if that's not necessarily just because that's who she is? But what if it's her reacting to the way that people expect her to behave? And then we saw a bit of the true Miyu when she was forced to confront Ibuki and her other friends when she was, where she's so tired of feeling like the, the, like the extra, the sidekick. And we saw a bit of her vulnerability and so it's kind of got me wondering, like, it's all really cringy, but maybe it's because it's all fake anyway. I mean, uh, Kazi is the same way. Like, he kind of tries to behave like a normal person, but he's really broken inside and he's really hurting. And it's hurting him every second. But he puts on a brave face. What if Miyu's brave face is being super adorable and like, yeah, it's cringy, but it's because it's not really her. And what if Rei lies when he's confronted with something stressful that he doesn't know how to deal with. 
because his way of dealing is distract, distract, distract. And me way of, of, of dealing is like being adorable because that's how she cultivates a feeling of like reality. Because if people can, if people like treat her like a child, then everything's okay. And like somehow that pulls away from like the, like the, the really terrible pains in their lives. So I'm getting an appreciation for it now. I'm still going to be really cringy if I had to keep going through some of those big, getting those mornings, you know, but I, as I put some thought into it, I said it in a tweet actually, uh, cause I was thinking about it. And then when I retweeted the last episode, cause, um, uh, I'm not super active on Twitter. I still use it occasionally, but um, I use it to interact with people and Fruit Bat Factory use Twitter and they often will share my videos, links to my videos when they when they feel like it. And uh, when they do, I usually will put in some kind of response, uh, maybe give an impression of like what I thought of the episode. And on this one, it kind of hit me as I was typing it out that response. So it was like, you know, I think I might've figured out what's really going on here. What if? What if all the stuff that I'm cringing at that feels super tropey, it's just these kids behaving how they think they should behave because they want to live the carefree life that they see on TV. The, they want to have the carefree existence that they, they watch in shows, read in books, and imagine that they should have. And it's all just kind of a facade that they throw up to try and put normalcy in a situation and feelings that are just too big to yeah, brush aside so it's cringy but it's cringy on purpose so i don't know that's my thinking about it I, i'm not sure if you agree with that or if it will redeem those parts in your eyes but i, I know it's a long intro but it got me really thinking about it and it's, I, i'm and then it's making me think because like the writers of the story there's so much in here that is clever and it just seems so odd that those scenes feel so almost like bleh and, but then if I put it in that context and start saying like, well, what, what's really going on here? It suddenly starts to see a bit more genius to me because how much of our youths, I mean, like when I was in high school or like now with like, like social media, like if you follow people's Facebook pages or Tumblr posts, like you're seeing the highlights of their lives. You're seeing the best parts of each other's lives. And it puts up this facade of like, Oh, life, normal life is supposed to be fun and full of adventure and excitement and all these great, amazing picture moments. But that's like, not even 5% of it. And we rarely share the darkness in our lives. So maybe that's what we're really seeing here. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm even more intrigued than I was before. Anyway, so sorry for the ramble at the beginning. It's just like, it kind of hit me what, what we might actually be seeing here. And I'm curious to see if I'm right. And I'm wondering if I'll be able to like, you know, figure that, fig I, I wonder if we'll see evidence of that soon. Well, more evidence, because I feel like me really painted a clear picture for us. Anyway, not much else I could say other than the fact that like Ibuki and Miu have a very strong kind of like, not even a rivalry. Miu kind of has a rival with Ibuki. I'm not sure how Ibuki feels. Um, part of the thing that's really interesting to me is like, there's something about Ibuki that's off to me. I remember I was talking about facades. I think Ibuki might have a facade. She doesn't ever seem... I want to say threatening, but so far, all the only emotions she ever just picks are like confident smiles and sadness. We know she's going through a lot. And I said it was dangerous because of Madoka saying like, oh, you should always smile for me. I wonder what Ibuki's darkness is because I think there must be something going on there. So we'll have to see. But anyway, uh, Madoka is who we're following, which I'm really excited about. I'm not entirely sure she's actually here though. It's like, no one seems to be responding. It's like, she hasn't really seen anybody, but nobody's responded to her yet. So I wonder if she's actually there because she's wearing a different uniform than the people here. So you would think that somebody would have noticed her. So I'm, I'm kind of worried that she's not um, really around anymore. We'll have to see. Anyway, so we're being introduced to this new uh, cheery lady uh, student. Apparently she's really pretty. She has like a very interesting like interpretation of her uh, school outfit, which it looks like everyone else wears like an undershirt, but doesn't look like she is. So that's interesting. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay. 
全然美しくないでしょあのね長方形は1対2分の1プラスルート5が一番美しいと言われているのよあーオッケー1プラス s q u a r e root of 5 divided by 2 I can't think of that off the top of my head, but it's not actually that difficult. That's probably what she did. It's one of those things where you like, you try and sound smart, but it's really not that smart. But I'm guessing like, a rectangle is the most beautiful at like, I think I've actually heard that the, the most beautiful for rectang a rectangle would be like, one by three or one by two maybe. But I'm going to see this because like, I'm curious now. Uh, how do I, there we go. So all I need really is a square root of five. All right, so that's three. Interesting. So why would a beautiful rectangle be one uh, by 1.162? I'm not sure, maybe it's the proportions. Oh wait, one by 1.62? That actually might be 16 by nine. That actually would be, I would consider that to be a very, it's a very like pleasing shape. It's what a lot of our high definition televisions are sit, are situated at if it's, if it's a nine by 16. That is the golden ratio, you're right. Like, well, that, 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 the second part, the, so like one, so one unit of length and then the secondary unit of length being 1.168, that's uh, the golden ratio, but it's a, it's a never ending like thing. She's actually right. It's funny that she said that, but like, I actually recently, um, I recently re uh, was looking at the golden ratio for some reason. It was like, it was like casually mentioned somewhere, but she's absolutely right. That is the right, that is the golden ratio. So, Terehan card or Sin Shop. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a pleasing proportion for some reason. I think she's using it to try and sound smarter than she is, you know, but like at the same time, like, she might be onto something here. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the, the ratio you're watching this right now, 60 by 9, it's. Uh, it's it's how we present most anything. If you know, it's like on my phone, my screen isn't actually the proper proportions to see a YouTube video, and so I can zoom it in, kind of chopping off the top and bottom to fill the full screen, or I can zoom it out and have little black bars on the sides. I personally think having the black bars on the sides is more appealing because then I'm getting the whole screen rather than a zoomed in portion. <laughs> ペディアスが初めて使ったと言われているの。あなた知らないかしらペディアス。あ、sure, sure. Alright, so lady, I'm sure you're cute and you obviously are, are intelligent, but I feel like you're kind of weird flex in here. Not sure what's up with that. アクロポリス上のパルテノン神殿の旧跡などの遺跡が多く残されている。Yes, yes, you are a wonderful encyclopedia. Oh, well, アテネはいいわ。それでね、ペディアスに関してすごい話があるのよ。ペディアスがね、アテネのパンテオンの屋根に立つ彫刻群を完成させた時の話よ。その時ね、ペディアスの請求に対してアテネの会計官は支払いを
何千年前でもねああのー、何かしら話がそれている気が Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. 仕方ないわねまだペイディアスに面白い逸話があるんだけどまたの時に話すわ I'm sure you do う,うんとにかく黄金比率がないとね芸術と呼ばれるミロのヴィーナスはただの腕を取られたマネキンにピラミッドは生八つ橋を例える山にバルテノン神殿はシロアリ被害にあった建物になってしまうわそれはとても残念なことでしょううんうんそうシロアリやシロアリをあなたは見たことあるかしら OK weird what? あの白く美しい虫よ<笑>あんなに美しいのにシロアリは実はゴキブリの仲間なのよ I feel like this would be it. She'd, she'd be a fascinating person to talk to, but also somebody would be like, I, I mean, I, I, I have stuff I have to do too. Can we, like, I, I'll, I'll see you later? Huh. <laughs> And then yeah. soon she's just like, I just wanted to make a good banner. Can we please talk about the banner? Shiroari is not a good thing. I'm going to see you later. 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 I'm going to see そしてその女王と王が傷ついた際の代わりとして副女王、副王がいるのよここで珍しいのは女王の他に王もいることよ Yeah, most of the time the kings or the,、uh, the drones are disposable そして働きありでしょこの子たちは最も数の多い階級よ全体の 90% から 95% は働きありで構成されているかしら<笑>凡人、次に兵隊あり外敵から家族を守るわ重要な役目よ。ヤマトシロアリの兵隊アリは特に頭部が発達し大きく、ハサミ状の大きな顎を持っているわ。素敵よね。ライトにふさわしい剣を持っているの。彼らを見ているとね、王政時代の生活が垣間見れる。そんな気がするの。ああ、You seem oddly fixated on this whole kings and queens thing。こう、歴史の一辺を覗いているような、そんな。兵隊アリなんてもう騎士団みたいでほんとうっとりしちゃうほどかっこいいわもう人間には嫌われるわよねそれはシロアリのせいではなく人間のせいなのよ今は害虫化されてしまったシロアリだけれど食物連鎖の中でセルロースを効率的に分解する重要な役割を果たしているのそれあの何を盛り上がってきているところなのにまた話が何を話って話がそれ Taking eternity. 話が何<咳>今話してるじゃないえー、っと話がそれてますあらそうしょうがないわねまあいいわあなたには特別時間をとってまたの時に話すわさ黄金比率を使ってもう一度看板作りよえでももう作っちゃったよやるからには完璧を求めなさいあはベイリアスのように美しいものを作りましょう。また作るのか。What what is this? So many difficult words. I can't understand it all. Um, this is J- Japan, right? <laughs> High school students are incredible, <laughs> though I'm actually one too. Our levels are just too different. ごめんなさいね。あなたのホメオスタシスに悲鳴を上げさせるつもりはなかったのだけれど。Cut screaming in your homeostasis. <laughs> That's a great phrase. お褒めいたしますああ、ホメオステーシス。何を褒めるの I actually use that word a lot more than I、uh, probably. Well, not more than I probably should, but it actually is a relevant word、uh, more often than not. アロスタティック不可のことよ。Okay, sure. アロスタティック。You're walking the star. It's like, this is definitely a problem. Like, it's one thing to understand and utilize like large words. That's cool at all. But if you're gonna talk in ways that are confusing to others, that's just you being a butthole. <laughs> Atashi, Aroma なんて tie tako to nai yo? Arostatic fuka te no ane? A, ano, Atashi mo iro iro iso gashi kara. Ah, kanban da yo ne? Ima kara nao ste kuru kara. The girl with the short hair dashes down the hall. Like she's escaping. It seems she didn't understand either. What? So she's the same as me after all. Ah, but she had to run down the hall. That's when it happens. I can see the long hair, the, gr- the glasses. I meet eyes with the girl who was using difficult words. They open wide. She's noticed me. She extends a leg. 
Step by step, she's getting gradually closer, without breaking her gaze. Uh, what do I do? What should I do? She's only three meters away. Wow, she's even prettier up close. No, she's probably going to say something to me. Ah, she's getting closer. If it's going like this, I need to be prepared. It's okay, just talk like you always do when, with Ibuki. Well, it's been a while since I spoke with a girl near my age other than Ibuki. Do your best, Madoka. I could do it. It's okay. The distance between us. It's finally only one meter. Looking her up close, she's surprisingly beautiful. Uh, it's kind of mystical. and She has this elusive feel. <clears throat> hey, why, why hasn't her gaze left me this whole time? I knew it. This is impossible. I don't know what to say. I'm confused by her gaze and panicking. You. She speaks to me. My pulse quickens even more. Calm down, Badoka. She just spoke to you like this she thought she would. You aren't a student here. Gah! Yeah! I spewed something weird out. Calm down. Just calm down, Badoka. Huh? Yeah, um, yes. Where is that uniform from? Of course, that's where she attacks. St. Luke's Girls' School. Oh, St. Luke's. Their high school is, a far is famous for acting. They turn out a lot of actresses. The girl knows everything. Though St. Luke's is famous, it's so, so it's probably not strange that she knows. Yes, that's right. I respond full of confidence. All right, I can converse well. And one more point of interest is that they're a Catholic school. Are you someone who believes in, loves, and respects the Father? No, I'm not a believer. I see. By the way, why have you come here? Ah, the inside of my head suddenly goes white. Um, um, what's a good excuse? Uh, excuse. Uh, the festival! Come on! It's like, literally happening. Um, I'm delivering something to a teacher here. What are you delivering? Um, uh, documents. A lot of documents to a teacher here. Who is the teacher? Um, um, uh, not good. Madoka, is it a pinch? I don't know any of the teachers. I forgot his name. Uh, th that's right. He wears glasses. There are a number of teachers who wear glasses, so who could it be? Um. <laughs> the bespectacled beauty ignores me, breaking out into a weird sweat and suddenly starts laughing. I can easily tell by your expression. You're obviously lying. You probably have your reasons. Sorry for teasing you. Huh? <laughs> I calm down and take a good look at her. She really is beautiful. But I realize I feel kind of nostalgic. Is it because of her scent? That's a weird thing to say. The scent pricks my nose. The hospital. It's the scent from inside that white box that's always sealed me away. But why? Why does she smell like a hospital? More importantly, come to my room. You're cute, so I'd like to speak, I'd like to speak more. That doesn't sound improper at all. Yes. Wait, what? <laughs> what a cute reaction. Do you dislike speaking with me? No, it's not that I dislike it or anything. If you don't dislike it, then it's fine. I won't take up much of your time. Uh, but, um, what do you want to talk about? There are, there are a few things I'd like to ask you, of various things I'd like to talk about. Sorry, but I'll decline. I don't have time. It's okay. I won't take much time. I want to speak with you, no matter what. All right, Cheery. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but I'm getting some uh, getting some weird vibes from you, girl. Like, calm down. For myself, of course. Huh? This is taking a strange turn. I could only manage to get out a stupid sound so that bespectacled beauty that suddenly appeared takes me by the hand and leads me to her room. Wait, could this be... Is she going to do something weird to me? I'm not sure. <laughs> is this Biscuit to be... Uh, <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can see why you jumped to that conclusion. I mean, I, I, I'm a little concerned myself. Not that she's lesbian, but that she's going to somehow do something very regrettable. Is Matoka in another pinch? I don't know what's up with this. Ooh, this is actually a kind of a cool little classroom. 
There are a lot of books, a desk and a folding chair in the place the call she calls her room. Is she, what if she's a teacher? Good. Minato isn't around. Sit here. Uh, Minato? Is that the owner of this room? Being alone with this girl is scary. I so I wish that Mino, Minota, uh, Minoto, what person? I, I wish that Minoto person, Minato. Gosh darn, I'm saying it wrong every time. Minato, Minato person, we're here. But I don't say that and sit down as I was told. Ugh, my heart again. It's pounding like crazy. She grabs another folding chair and sits across from me. Why opposite sides? Yeah, what is with this girl? I'm getting some weird vibes. Why? I'm supposed to be strong-willed. But I'm surprised at myself for being weak for some reason. Hmm. She makes a show of putting her finger to her lips. Oh, fetch, man. She's creepy. This is the first time we've met, so what's with her? If you need to face her calmly, is what my heart's saying, but I can't tell that on the contrary, I'm getting redder and redder. I mustn't get caught in her pace. In, in her pace? I don't know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> so, As I go to stand up, she firmly grabs me by the arm. Why? She forcefully makes me sit in the chair. What in the world is she going to say? Oh. I see. She suddenly asks me this. The thing I'm grasping in my hand. It's a half transparent jewel like stone. This stone that is giving off an aura like it's overflowing with life. She stares at me with her large eyes. As if I'm wrapped up with an invisible st stirring, I can't move a single step. あなた、知ってるの? <laughs> でもこの物語はあまりにも you too. So, I'm guessing that she might, maybe she's encountered, like, if, like, this gem represents maybe, like, like a, like a final day, like, where you get healed of a normally incurable, like, injury. And you get a day to just kind of do whatever you want. And then your life's kind of officially at the end. You know, like maybe it's like, an, it's like a trade. Uh, maybe uh, Cheery, like has met people before who've gone through this journey. And so she just wants to know like, like what's your story? Like what are you wanting to do before you vanish forever? <laughs> Her eyes are serious. She's seeking the truth, and the end to this story. そう。それで私と話を。そうよ。あなたの手に持っているものが見えたから。これについては知っているの。残念だけど、そのことに関しても何も。でもきっとこれから知ることになるわ。きっとね。あなた変わってるわね。別に知ってもいいことないと思うけ
魂の探求なき生活は人間にとり生きがいなきものである。聞いたことはあるけど、ソクラテスよ。ああ、哲学者の。She gives a slight smile and nods. ナナミカズヤ。カズヤナナミ。Her smile is pretty cute, so my tongue slips. ナナミカズヤ。言っちゃった。これは私からのヒント。それ以上は何も言わないわ。What? How is he involved in this? He doesn't know how to do it. He doesn't know how to do it. He doesn't know how to do it. But giving her a hint was the correct answer. She can definitely become a friend here. He can cooperate with. I get that feeling. Thank you. And what else is there? Please. What is happiness to you? I want to hear you. Please. What is happiness to you? Please. What is happiness to you? 幸せ。そう、幸せ。Happiness, joy. Every day I would wish and wish that I could grasp it. 私にとっての幸せはたくさんありすぎて一つに決められないわ。でもたった一つ。したら、私はある場所に行ってみたいの。I get the feeling that our area around her eyes relaxed a little that moment. 何をしに行くのかしら。そりゃあ私だっていろいろあるのよ。でもね、やっぱり私のありすぎる望みを全部叶えるには、ここへ行くのが一番なの。欲張りさんね。<笑>でも、選ぶ結果は一つなんだから、欲張ったっていいでしょそうね。She whispers this and reaches her hand toward my cheek. Her fingers caress my cheek. 嘘つきね。あなた、神を信じてるじゃない。<笑>どうかもしれないわね。でも、そうすることで、私は自分を守りたいだけなの。I only do that to protect myself. It's a real big question of religion, isn't it? Because if it's, if, if, there, if religion is just a facsimile, something we've always come up with throughout history, isn't that really what its purpose is, ultimately? To protect us? From the questions we don't want to have. Well, like the realities that we don't want to face. Like the like, existential pointlessness of,、uh, of existence, the inevitability of non existence, the, the dread. And this is truly the dread. Like, I don't necessarily fear death, but I am. Very saddened that there's a very, it's very likely that I am going to pass on and have very little to leave behind. I wish I could be like these great like philosophers, like Aristotle, Socrates, and like the many others, the people, men and women who have left an impression that are going to be very reluctantly forgotten. That they were able to make the world a better place even now. Despite the fact that they died so long ago. If there was ever a big dream of mine, it was to be able to leave at least somewhat an impression like that. But I think that that's not likely to ever happen. Not really. Sure, like, the, as long as, like, YouTube exists, like, this channel will probably let, outlive me. And maybe that'll be a way I can, you know, give some kind of lasting impression, but. I, I, that's definitely not why I ever started the channel. It's not like supposed to be my legacy. It's just supposed to be a place where I can be me and share something I feel is important and doesn't get shared enough. But there's a big part of me that really wants to leave something behind, something that can do something more. But most of us don't. And that's okay. But it's still sad. And maybe, maybe that's the grand illusion of religion. Ultimately, it's just to kind of. Cover up and、uh, help us make life more palatable. There really is a chance that there's truth to religion, and I don't want to say here nor there, like which side of that line I fall on, but I at least can conceptualize the concept that religion, in its essence, is more driven by this、uh, idea of like protecting ourselves by uptaking religious fervor. Because, regardless of whether it's true or not, it is true that it helps and it provides that protection. It can provide context for things that we don't, we don't truly understand. 
encourages people often to be better than they are and to seek something higher. Um, if there is something about religion I really love, it's the fact that it encourages in pretty much every respect, like uh, of all the religion systems that I'm aware of that are active. I think uh, ancient religions really didn't do this so much, but more and more as time's gone on, I think religion has helped drive this idea, this ambition of being better than we need to be, of choosing the high road over the low, of caring for others rather than just caring for ourselves, and living with hope that even if we have the most basic and uh, unobtrusive or uneventful lives, that we somehow are contributing to a greater whole and leaving an impression and a mark and that our efforts will not be fruitless. And I think that that's worth, if, if that's, if that's what the, if religion is nothing more than a delusion, but that's the, like the feeling, the goal and the, like the end game of it, is that not worthy? There are pe terrible things that people will do to themselves and to others in the name of religion. But I find that even in history, those were minorities. That in the grand scheme of things, typically those who follow religion aren't doing so because of some kind of weird brainwashing or a malintent or, or a seeking of, of control of some kind or another. Like whilst all that can happen, 99% of the people who involve themselves in religion are simply just seeking that protection and just wanting to be better than they are and have context to their actions and desires. Something that helps us all just sleep better at night, if anything. And if, that, and if, and if nothing else, that's worthy. That's worthy. She grins. Decision? Oh yeah, because it keeps talking about like how like there's a choice she has to make. And the guy in the hospital talked about a choice too. ありがとう。じゃあ私は私の幸せをつかみに行くわ。えっと、お名前はジエリオ。青とチエリ。あなたは私は宝城マドカ。わかったわ。マドカちゃん、これからもずっとよろしく。Huh. Her white out outheld hand is warm and pleasant. So she was odd, but she does she knows something more. I'm interested to know more about her. I said Farrow to Chitty and left the room. If possible, I wanted to keep talking all day. Chitty and I seem to be on the same wavelength. She's a mysterious person. She said she doesn't know anything, but she reacted strongly to this stone. What kind of story pages will she find in the future? And what kind of ending will she watch over? I hope that somehow it's a happy end. I glance at the clock. Anyway, I need to hurry. Otherwise, it'll all go to waste. I have something to do here. The second floor hallway changed completely from before and is now bustling with students. There wasn't any kind of chime, so it shouldn't be break time. Everyone's holding a wallet, so they seem to be in the team of charge of shopping. I search for 2D amidst that. When I start to walk down the hall, everyone turns toward me. Of course. A girl from another school suddenly appeared, but I ignore them and keep walking. Hey, who's that? What school uniform is that? I don't I know it. Wow, she's cute. I hear various people. Everyone's gaze is concentrated on me. It's embarrassing, but it feels kind of good. I walk beautifully. I'm glad I did walking practice. I walk briskly like an actress down the red carpet, and then a sign with and then a sign with 2D written on it juts out before me. There it is. This is it. I firmly grasp the stone in my pocket. Please give me courage. If Madoka, from here on out, I'll show you my skill. I'll show my skills. Turn all that nervousness into pleasure. Okay, it's time to raise the curtain on my stage. I fling the door open with hes without hesitation. What is she doing? I'm really, really. What is this gonna be? Kazuya. Okay. Is he in the room? God, we've already gone so long, but I ramble so much, I'm gonna go a little longer. <clears throat> I 
This is wrong. This isn't what I wished for. What are you saying is wrong? I just want you to remember. What? Want me to want me to remember what? The feelings from that time, the hope from that time, the dreams from that time. I refuse to play the main character, so Ray is filling in for me. Ibuki is unexpectedly good. I didn't think her acting would be this good. I've known her a long time, but I had no idea. Ray's not bad either. I wish he'd just been the main character instead of me. I can't remember anymore. The hopes, the dreams, or anything. The moment Ray says his line. The classroom door flings wide open. This is going to be interesting. <clears throat> a girl I've never seen before slowly enters the room. Furthermore, where the, is that uniform from? Oh, yeah, she, she knows the lines, of course. The classroom stirs with people wondering what the heck's going on. The, cla the play's line? Uh, Madoka? Alongside the classroom's bustle, Ibuki lets out a yell. It's been a while since I've heard that unusually docile Ibuki shout. Her eyes are, all, are opened wide. What is she? Why is she so surprised about? Sure, a student from another school showing up is surprising. But not that surprising. What's going on, Madoka? I can't do her voice in a loud. I can't do it. There you are. Hey, Ibuki. They seem to know each other. But Ibuki's clearly acting strange. She's shaking terribly. Uh, uh, hello? For a moment, I think Ray's going to try and win over even a girl from another school, but when I look at Ray's reaction, it doesn't seem like he's talking, taking that line, of, taking that line of action. Huh? Madoka, why, uh, how? Anyway, I'll explain later. For now, watch my acting. She runs up to the teacher's podium. Yeah. She picks up a prop brush off the floor and begins to act out what's written in Ray's script. The classroom falls into silence. Why does she know the contents of the play? Furthermore, she's doing it so smoothly without looking at the script. Who the heck is this girl? Ibuki's friend? On the other hand, Ibuki is staring at her with a perplexed expression. She's like playing both parts too. It's amazing. だから僕はこのありさま。じゃあ、私があなたの絵を評価する。あなたが他人に評価を求めることで価値を見出せるなら、私、あなたの絵、あなたもこの絵に思い入れがある。絵に対して愛があるんでしょ？それをだったらそれ
When not, when I was watching Ibuki and Rei, it didn't feel that way. They're on completely different levels. Who in the world is she? Okay, okay. Thank you for the applause. How was my performance? Freaking great. Applause erupts again. Thank you, everyone. She gets down from the podium, and the classroom turns boisterous. That's the St. Luke's uniform. You're right, they're famous for their drama department. St. Luke's. I've never heard of them, but from everyone's reactions, it seems to be a high school famous for their, their, their theater department. Maybe the girl appears in dream, dramas or something? But why is that St. Luke's student in our class? And it seems like she knows Ibuki. She runs over to Ibuki. Were you watching, Ibuki? Yeah, much more importantly, M Madoka, you're healed. Well, something like that. Ibuki's expression seems somehow serious. The classroom falls silent again. No one in class can understand what they're what they're talking about. They're just being quiet. Myself included, of course. And amidst that, one boy is excessively energetic. Who, 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 who is this lovely sweets? I was seriously mesmerized. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. You back off, you. Ray. Yeah. Ray st starts dancing for joy in front of her. No matter the situation, this guy, he really is. Ibuki, ignore the idiot. I interject without thinking. Hey, who are you calling an idiot? I'm smart, my lovely sweets. Could this guy be Ray? Yeah, that's right. Ibuki nods like she's exasperated. She knows about Ray too. Hey, um, are you two more than just acquaintances and actually friends? Yeah, she's my friend. <laughs> I showed her the script of the play, too. Everyone nods like they understand now. <laughs> she's here! Ray lets out a roar. What's with this guy? Ibuki, introduce this cute sweet, this cutie sweets. This sweets knows who I am, right? Why, why? God, he's such a dunce. Am I that famous? Because I'm cool? Oh, being a hunk is so troublesome. No, it's because I talked about you. I've heard a lot about you. Wow, she doesn't know about me. This is it. This is fate. I can clearly see the red string. Just as rumored. What? What? What rumor? Jeez, shut up, Ray. Like I could just shut up with the cute sweets in front of me? Cut it out already. My talented sweets, I'm coming for you. When Ray spreads out his arms to embrace her. Oh, good. Thank you. What are you doing? There's a sound of the door forcefully opening. And Shyojin's low voice, like, uh, lo low, low, low voice laced with anger resounds through the classroom. Uh, Ayano! Fate, cutie, sweets. Your loud voice was resounding in the hallway, you know. It seems she heard Ray's voice and came running. Her face is steeped in anger. No, that's... What is it? Hey, Ray. <laughs> well, you, well, you see, I was trying to be friends with this girl. Universal friendship. <laughs> oh, friends? Yeah, that's right. We, we, we did something good. You understand, right, Ayano? It seems your ca in your case you're too physical, even with your friends. She says this, staring at Ray with sharp eyes. And, and pulls really hard on his ear. Ow! Ow! Wow, it hurts just looking at it. I ought to, oh, I give up! Oh, this is just physical intimacy, too. Hey, hold on, that hurts, I ought to. I'm really sorry. Oh then come this way. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Ow! Sh uh, Shoujin grabs Ray's ear and drags him out of the classroom. No, help me! Cutie sweets! I don't have any business with Ray today, sorry. No way! Cutie, cutie, honey! You suck. Hurry, hurry up and go. Goodbye! She says this with a smile and waves at Ray. Ah! As Ray screams, the door slams shut. Thank goodness for that. Man, though, it must suck to be her. I mean, like, why is she even in a relationship with that guy? I just don't get it. The classroom suddenly fell silent as she speaks. That's right. The, the one I have business with today is Kazuya Nabuki. She suddenly says my name. Why me? 
Hey, Ibuki, where's Kazuya? Uh, um... Ah, it's you. Before Ibuki finishes speaking, the girl clearly stares, starts coming closer to me step by step. What, what the heck? Then as she arrives in front of my desk, she gives a big grin. Found you! Why does she know who I am? This is the first time we've met. You're so. Hello. Did I mishear her? So? Just now, she she said so. That's what she called me, right? So, the girl in the lake sent her. Uh, um, Madoka? He's not so. He's Kazuya. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Kazuya. She, yeah, she did just call me so. I didn't miss here. Sorry, I made a little mistake. Don't worry about it, Akazia. Just a little mistake. So? Why? Hm? Why just now? <laughs> she laughs rather peculiarly. Just a little mistake, so? So. So. The reason hearing that name so rings a bell is because of the dream yesterday. So, will and will I be able to return to this purple one? In my dream, that angel called me so. A woman who had the singer's voice of an angel. It's probably just a coincidence. Well, if it was a mistake, th that's fine. I'm Kazuya. I know. I know everything about you, Kazuya. Huh? Everything about me? What is this girl saying? That's right. I know all of it. I look at her dubiously. That snowy world, your dreams, that angel? She whispers this and smiles. Upon hearing that, I can tell that I suddenly go pale. What? Why does she know that? Kazuya, are you okay? Your face is pale. So, are you okay? Who is she? Who the heck are you? Sorry for surprising you, Kazuya. I haven't introduced myself. I'm Madoka Hyojo. I came here to meet you. Meet me? Yes, I need to talk to you, but it's a little hard to talk here. Kazuya, can you and Ibuki come to the roof? Me too? What the heck? This is... Could it be that really wasn't a dream? Crap. What the heck's going on? Maybe I'll understand if I talk to her. That strange dream from yesterday as well. And that weird picture I pretended to not to notice. To the roof. Yes, let's go. Okay, everyone. It's only for a bit, but I'll be borrowing Ibuki and Kazuya. Oh? She pulls us by the hands, and Ibuki and I leave the classroom behind. Okay. Okay. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I think this is a good place for us to stop, I suppose. Like, I was ranting a lot, but man, who things have gotten spicy. What? <laughs> Color me intrigued? What the heck's going on? And what is she gonna say? <sighs> Ooh, okay. No, I'm getting really excited here now. I want to know what Madoka's saying. I have a feeling she's sadly not gonna be much of a, a character for much longer. Cause like I think she like she's implying that she has a limited time scale before she's gone, and which is really sad because I really like Madoka, but I'm really curious to see what she's gonna talk about. Is Miu gonna sneak up to the roof with them and kind of like follow along and see what's going on or like what? I really want to make sure we see everything, but like because we're done seeing from Kazuya's point of view, so <sighs> oh my gosh, what is gonna happen? Wow. All right. This game keeps finding weird places to hook me on, but this is definitely one of them. I'm so interested to learn more about what's going to happen here. And God, I'm going to be sad at Madoka, because she's really seeming like best girl so far. And if she's going to be gone, it's going to be really sad, but I guess that's all right. But thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Ooh, it's getting ex it's getting spicy. That's the word for it. It's getting spicy. I have no clue what we're going to, ex what we're going to see coming up next, but it really is interesting. The mystery just keeps building. And it's really curious to see. I want to see how all these other people, these satellite individuals, are involved somehow. Like, like what's that creepy science lady? Like, what's her deal? Like, how does she understand what's going on here? Like, she's obviously been a part of these kinds of events before, but is she going to be just kind of a passive observer, or kind of like the Merlin of this story, 
Or is she going to become a directly involved character somehow? I, I don't know. She, like, Madoka implied that she was going to become more involved with Kazuya. Because, and Madoka seems to have this understanding of, like, a chain of events of some kind. Uh, maybe she got from, like, the lake girl. So, like, what does she know? Like, I really, I, next week's going to be exciting. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. So, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much to our patrons who are obviously here on the side. Like, they are wonderful, wonderful people directly supporting the channel. I'm so grateful for you. I hope you continue to enjoy the patron cast and that we continue to help build the channel together more. Thank you for selecting this series. Like when we had our, our, uh, our, our, the options came up. Um, I think we actually might've hit something really, really good here. Like might've been a bit of a rough start in some ways, but now that I'm trying to like seeing it with new eyes and now we're getting some of this, like I'm really starting to get excited to see what happens next. So hopefully you are as well. But thank you all so much for being a part of the channel. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for you, the viewers, whoever you happen to be, wherever you happen to be, or if you're passing, if you're going to stick around to watch some more content, thank you for spending your time with me. It means so much to me. And I'm really grateful I get to share a passion of mine with so many wonderful people. So thank you. And until the next video watching me, I'll see me next. I'll see you there.